Hello everyone, welcome back to Fem Sims, and today I am teaching you guys how to make a top and marvelous designer. This tutorial will focus on how to make shirts, you know, upper body garments, and marvelous designer. The next tutorial will be about how to make that top playable in The Sims 4 by using Blender. So next tutorial will be in Blender. But this tutorial will only focus on Marvelous Designer and actually making the mesh of the top. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go over here to the top left corner and press File, Open, Avatar. Or you can just press Control Shift A and um, your File Explorer window should show up where you have your avatar saved. I will link below um, a avatar that you can download for Marvel's Designer that is designed for The Sims 4. You have to have that download, it's completely free. So then just double click this and it will load into Marvel's Designer. Before you start making the top, you wanna have a reference picture. I'm making the top from Lisa from Blackpink. It's always nice to go on Pinterest, Instagram, Google, wherever you want and try to find a reference picture of a piece of clothing that you wanna make. You could just freestyle it, but I feel like you have more direction, you know what I'm saying, when you have a reference picture. So go on Pinterest or whatever and find what you want to make. I'll have my reference picture up here on the screen. Okay, so right here where my cursor is at, this is the 3D window where you will see your mesh on the avatar. And right here on the right is the... 2D window where you will make the sewing pattern or the pattern in general for your mesh. So the first thing that I like to start off with is the middle of the top, like the main part. I guess you could say that goes on the middle part of the body, if that makes sense. So you want to go to the top of Marvelous Designer and you want to go to the polygon tool or you can press H. Really doesn't matter, but it's right here. It's it almost looks like a file folder but yeah that's what you want to click you want to press polygon and then you want to come down to her neck and you just want to follow what i'm doing i like to go along her shoulders not too high add one point right here one right here and then go down to the bottom of her armpit put another point right there and then go down to about the middle of her waist if I'm making a cropped shirt or a crop top. This will be how long your top is. And then you wanna go over horizontally to the middle line that's right here and put a point right there. Make sure this line right here in the middle is purple. Cause if it's not purple, that means that your line is not straight and you wanna have a straight line you want everything to be symmetrical and stuff like that so make sure it's purple if it's not purple that means it's not straight and then you just want to go all the way up to about right here i think i'm gonna go right here and then connect it to the first dot and yeah and then you'll have this so since lisa's top the part at the top where her neck is it's actually kind of wide so what you'll do is your, if you wanna select a point, go to this triangle tool right here. It's called edit pattern. You can also just press Z, but it's, it's a triangle with like points on it. You wanna click on that if you wanna select a point. I'm gonna select this point and I'm gonna move it over some to make the neck part wider. And uh, yeah, that's how you select a point. So then I'm going to click this where it says edit pattern. You want to click and hold it and then you will get even more options to select when it comes to selecting points and editing the lines i want to edit the curve point of a line with this tool you are able to make curved lines so the neck part of this shirt is curved so you'll just go to about the middle of the line that you want to curve and you want to click it and then drag it like this that to however much you want to i'm going to go back if you want to go back to edit pattern just click and hold it and then you're back at edit pattern and then i want to select this point and bring it down to like right there you see how i have like all these dotted lines on the screen now if you hold shift while you are dragging a point it will automatically make your movements symmetric and straight so if you're ever moving a point and you want to make sure it's straight 
make sure the line is purple and you can hold shift and it'll automatically make it straight so i want to bring that down to about right there i like to curve the sleeve part right here the highlighted blue line right now i like to curve it so you just click and drag over to the right about right there and when it comes to curving, that's all I would usually do. But one thing I like to ensure before I make the rest of the mesh, I like to um, make sure that this point right here and this point is um, symmetric and like in a straight line. So I'll just move this over to the right until it's perfectly aligned with that point. And yeah, the reason why I have this so close to her body is because Lisa's top is kind of like fitted. You know what I'm saying? So I'll keep that like that. But after you have this side of the top finished, the left side, you want to make sure you are on edit pattern and then you want to click this line right here. And then you want to right click the line and press unfold symmetric editing with sewing, sewing, it's sewing. And what that does is it makes the other half of the front part of the top so you don't have to do it all over again now if you want to edit it the reason why i don't press unfold and i press unfold with symmetric editing is because if i go back and i want to edit something on this side it'll automatically do it on the other side as well if you didn't press symmetric editing then it wouldn't do it on the other side as well so that's why i like symmetric editing it's always good to save your project as you go because you don't want to lose progress. So just go to File, Save as Project, and just save it as whatever. I'll save it as Lisa, and just press Save. And just, you know, when you finish something, just press Control S and it'll automatically save. It's just, you know, good to ensure that you don't lose anything. Now it's time to do the back part of the top. To do that, it's really simple. You just want to click the front part, press Ctrl C to copy it, move over to the right a little bit, and then you want to press Ctrl V, which will paste the piece that you copied so we can make the back half. Now over here in the 3D window, we have two floating pieces. And uh, this one right here, this is what we, we are going to use for the back half. But first we need to position it into the back of the avatar. So while your cursor is in the 3D window, press five on your number pad. And then you'll be taken to the top of the avatar. Click on the back piece, and then you will get this um, tool right here that you can use to position the top. Click on the square and move it to the back of the avatar. And to move your camera around like this, you wanna click the scroll wheel that you have on your mouse. You wanna click it and then you can move the camera however you want in both windows. Click the mouse button to rotate around the avatar as well. But after you position the back piece to the back of the avatar, click on it again. So what we need to do now is flip the back piece so that this gray part will be positioned and facing the avatar's back. Because if we kept it like this and put this top in Blender, it would be invisible. The whole back of her top would be invisible because anything that is gray or dark gray whatever you want to call it is invisible you know what i'm saying so you want to make sure your entire mesh is white so to flip this all you have to do is click and then you want to right click it and then you'll get this menu and then find where it says flip normal and click it and there you go now it's facing the right way so for the back piece of this top, I what I normally do, I don't keep it the exact same way as the front. I just delete this. I feel like there's no reason to have a curve on the back piece, but you can always add one if you want to. I'll probably add one just for this shirt. So I'm going to hold the edit pattern tool and go to the edit curve point tool and click and drag it just a little bit. Like literally just a little bitty, inty beanty, teensy bit. That was cringy. Anyways, just right there. And yeah, I think that's how I want it to look. So now to join these together to make it a 
proper top, at least to start off with, we need to sew it. And we should all know what sewing is. But to do sewing in Marvelous Designer, all you have to do is go to the segment sewing tool, but you can also press N. I like to do it in the 3D window because I feel like doing it in the 2D window is really confusing. So if you go to the 3D window, you can see which sides of the top to connect to each other. You know what I'm saying? So much easier than doing it in the 2D window. Um, but one key thing to look at when you are sewing is you see this little bitty blue line right here. I have my cursor by it. You need to pay attention to that because if I choose this side and the little blue line is at the bottom and I click it and then I go to the back and I try to sew it but the little blue line is at the top, my sewing pattern or my sewing lines, whatever you want to call it, it's twisted and we don't want it to be twisted you know what i'm saying so i'm going to undo this and what you want to do is to properly sew in marvelous designer you need to make sure that the little blue top make sure it's at the top or the bottom it doesn't matter at first click it and then wherever you want to connect it to the matching piece at the back make sure the little blue line is matching to wherever you had it at the front i hope that made sense but yeah, just make sure they're matching. And then you want to click it again, and then it'll sew. Just like that. Make sure it's straight. But if, under any circumstances, you do get them twisted like this, all you have to do is go to the other um, sewing pattern, which is edit sewing. This is just to edit sew lines that you already have down. Click that, or you can just press B. And then click the, the sewing line right here. Mine is purple. Just click it and then right click it and then press reverse sewing and then it'll automatically turn straight whichever one you want to do is fine just make sure the sewing lines are straight so i'm going to go back to segment sewing the segment sewing tool and i'm going to do the other side of the top blue line at the top on both sides great and uh, another key thing when I started, when I first started making tops in Marvelous Designer, I made a huge mistake and I could not figure it out for like a whole week and it's incredibly dumb. There are certain parts of the top you do not want to sew. You do not want to sew everything together because if you do, it will look weird and it will not work out properly. You will not sew this part to this part. You will not sew the neck parts together. Why? Because the neck part needs to be open so the neck can be um can come out of the top. You know what I'm saying? You do not want to sew the sleeves together. That's what I did. I kept sewing the sleeves together and I was so confused as to why my shirt wasn't looking right. And when you sew the sleeves together, it'll be closed. But you need, you know, you need it to be open so you so the sim's arms can get through. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you don't sew those two together. And you do not want to sew the bottom together either. Because obviously the bottom needs to be open so the shirt, you know, the, the Sims body can get through. You know what I'm saying? So make sure those parts are always open and not sew together. The parts that you do want to sew together though would be the sides of the top and the top of the sleeves right here. Make sure the little blue lines are matched up together and then click them together like that. These are the only parts that you want to sew together. And after you have your sewing finished and it is all proper, just press the space bar and boom. The space bar is, um, it initiates the simulation which simulates the top onto the avatar's body. And yeah, you could just finish right here if you want, but I'm going to show you guys how to add sleeves as well. So after you have done this, this is just the basis for the um, top. And now we need to make sleeves. What I do when I'm making sleeves, all I do is I go to the polygon tool and I click and hold it so I can get to the rectangle tool. And I go to the 2D window right here and I just make a uh, rectangle. I'll make a long rectangle if it's a long sleeve shirt and I'll make a short rectangle if it is a short sleeve shirt. 
but do it to your desired length it really doesn't matter um so i'll do that and then after that i'll go over here into the 3d window right and in the 3d window if you look to the left right here there are multiple options that you can choose go to the um option right here you want to highlight put your cursor over it and then you'll get even more options you want to go over to the right two times and if you click this you will get these blue dots and these are arrangement points where you can click on a piece of your shirt so i have the rectangle clicked on and then you can click on one of these dots and it'll automatically move the piece that you have clicked on it'll automatically move it to that dot you know what i'm saying so it's really useful and it's really helpful when you don't want to struggle with moving it yourself but yeah and then you can just easily turn them off if you don't want to keep them on but after i do that i like to use only one rectangle for the sleeve i don't like to use multiple pieces so i'll just make i'll go to the um transform pattern tool it's a solid triangle with no dots on it just a regular triangle or you can just press a and i'll click on the rectangle and i'll make it wider by dragging it to the left and right and like i said it just makes the sleeve wider lisa's top it the sleeves are quite big and puffy so i'll just you know try to mimic that in marvelous designer i think this should be big enough but i think i should do that so i can also make it longer to fit the sims arm so after you have the desired length for your sleeve let's go back to the segment sewing tool now before we sew the sleeve to the rest of the top we need to divide it into two so we can properly sew it to the front and the back of the top what you want to do is you want to make sure you are in edit pattern and you want to select only the top line of the rectangle and then click and hold edit pattern and go to add point slash split line and when you right click the top of the rectangle this menu will show up you will go all the way down to uniform split and what that does it automatically adds a point in the middle of that line segment so we don't have to do it ourselves and so that each side is the same length and then you'll just press ok and now we have our segment there so now we can sew the sleeve to the rest of the shirt go to the 3d window make sure you are on segment sewing and not edit sewing and click the one of the sides of the top line of the sleeve and then connect it to the matching part on the top you know what i'm saying just do what you see i'm doing on the screen you know what i'm saying does that make sense i don't think it does so just click right here and this part will go to that part just make sure they aren't twisted you know what i'm saying that's just the that's a key point when you're sewing make sure they aren't twisted or it'll look weird but yeah this part goes to this part and this part goes to this part now before we press the space bar we need to connect the bottom or the sides of the sleeves together so press right here and press right there and boom now they are connected and press the space bar and there you go that is a really um tight sleeve and that's not what i was going for so i'll just go back to the 2d window and i'll just make it um i'll just make it a little bit wider on both the sides i don't know how much wider i want it though see now it's not equal length you could make it equal length like if you like edit the sleeve after adding the segment you could try to make it perfect in length but it's really not that big of a deal but i'm not going to try to keep it symmetric or the same length right now i'm just gonna make it wider i think that's that should be wide enough maybe maybe a little bit more like a little bit more okay this should be wide enough and i know it looks weird now but we are going to fix that so as you can see my sleeve looks really weird right now it looks nothing like lisa's and that is because we need to add a cuff at the end of the sleeve so it'll look um better <laughs> lisa's cuffs they're quite long than what i would usually do but whatever 
yeah and to make cuffs it's really easy just go to the rectangle tool and just make a just make a rectangle or a square that's smaller and shorter in terms of length and width than your sleeve something that something that looks like what I'm doing right now and then what I like to do I like to go back to the blue dots over here and I like to select my cuff and click this dot right here so it's automatically on top of the sleeve remove the blue dots and then sew it together this sewing you can just do in the um 2d window it's it's not that confusing you know what i'm saying i like to do this one the 2d window just select right here and select right here now the the same thing that i said about sewing in, in the 3d window applies to the 2d window also make sure that the lines are on the same side if it's on the left keep it on the left if it's on the right keep it on the right if it's on the top keep it on the top you know what i'm saying you don't want it to be twisted so select the top of the cuff and the bottom of the sleeve and then sew the cuff together so it can be closed and uh, press the space bar and there you go this is our cuff our sleeve i don't does this look weird we'll edit it some more it kind of looks weird but we'll edit it some more and don't forget when you are in simulation mode your cursor will turn into this hand which is in like a grabbing position you could say and you can use that to grab a part of your mesh and pull it however you like so like you can use this to roll up the sleeves if you want want it to roll them down pull them out some more whatever you want to do you know what i'm saying but I feel like, like right here, I think I'll bring this in some. Yeah, I think that looks better. Oopsies. Yeah. So now we need to make the other sleeve to do that fairly easy so what i like to do like i said i really like symmetric editing it's really easy and convenient for me as a creator you'll just click on the sleeve and then right click on it and find symmetric pattern with sewing and then i like to paste my my other sleeve on the other side right here now it's perfectly um in sync with the other sleeve so if i make a change to this sleeve it'll also apply to this sleeve as well so we'll go back to the blue dots and make sure we have this sleeve selected and put it right here. And since we did symmetric pattern with sewing, the sewing should already be applied to the sleeve and we should just be able, or you should just be able to press the space bar and it should automatically fit on the avatar. There you have it. And now we need to do the same thing with the cuff. Select the cuff right click it as well and go to symmetric pattern with sewing paste it right there go to the blue dots put it right there and uh yeah press the space bar there you go this is starting to come together so now as you can see after i paste it so now you can see after i paste it the other sleeve this part right here it's not sewed together so make sure everything sewed together i didn't see this initially but just make sure it's sewed together press space bar and there you go um so one thing i like to do is i like to make sure that there is no clipping whatsoever on this mesh and what clipping is it's basically you see this hole right here basically you see how the avatar is gray if you see gray coming through your white mesh that means that there's a hole in the mesh and there is clipping now to fix clipping you can just grab and like pull it pull the mesh out some more which is effective or to ensure that there is never any clipping you can select the entire mesh and go over to this menu right here the property editor and scroll down until you see particle distance so with particle distance i like to turn my particle distance down to 10 only if it's necessary and what particle distance does like i said it prevents clipping from happening on the mesh 10 is the desired like number for cc 
anything lower than 10, I'm gonna pray for you. I really don't use anything lower than 10. I just try to stick at 10, but I, I'll probably go down to 15 too. Bring the 20 down a little bit, but not too much. You know what I'm saying? The higher your particle distance, the lower poly your mesh is. But the lower the particle distance, then the higher poly your mesh is. But yeah, so I'll think, I think I'll change this particle distance to 15 and keep it right there because it's it looks really good you know what i'm saying with the 15 particle distance so i'll just keep it right there yeah what i'm doing right now i'm just rolling her sleeves up a little bit just to like you know add some some flair i guess you could say i don't know i feel like my top is not looking like lisa's right now like at all If you um if you want to change the color of your mesh while you're in marvelous designer all you have to do is click on the fabric up here and then go down to the property editor and find the color tab click it and just change it to whatever you want i'm gonna make mine black just so it matches lisa's a little bit and yeah i'm just editing the mesh you know with the tools we talked about so it can look more like lisa's So I think what I'm going to do with the sleeves, I'm going to select the left bottom segment and I'm going to move it in some. And then I'm going to select the other segment and move it in some as well just to see what it does to the sleeves. Okay, yeah, I made the bottom more tighter and then I'm going to go make this wider the way it originally was. And that's how it looks. Do I like this? So this is the basics of how I make my meshes in Marvelous Designer, at least when it comes to tops. I will do another tutorial on bottoms and full body meshes, and I will do another tutorial on some of the other options in Marvelous Designer, like zippers and buttons and top stitches, stuff like that. And yeah, that's it. Bye. <laughs>